You, you do your best, so I mean, there there are thousands and thousands of emails every day and forum posts and whatever. Sure. Um, but it's just so as far as making everybody happy, you're not going to do that. No. Um, but you try and make the strongest voices happy, or sure. the voices you can at least make it. So some some people are asking for things that are more possible. Yeah, that's what um, I thought. Yeah, so sorry. I try and do things like that, or things that are more sane. You, you do what you can, um, mm. but uh, basically the, the marching orders, as far as uh, as far as I think about it, and the people that work for it with me, uh, is just think about it as if. I mean, I think about it exactly as I thought about it before I worked here, which is if. I knew there was somebody working at the company who was yeah. supposed to listen to me. What would I want them to do? Sure. And what would I reasonably expect them to do? So yeah. there are some things that I would want them to do, but are probably a little crazy and mm. might be beyond a reasonable expectation. There are other things I want them to do that they should really do and mm. are just good business and good for good for their fans and uh, a lot of other things. So those are the things I try my hardest to make happen mm. and just to even when I don't have something, I mean, there's many cases where I don't have good news or I don't have the answer, or even if I have the answer, I can't talk about it at this time. Yeah, sure. Uh, but at least to talk to people because there's nothing that sucks more than this sort of feeling of being frozen. Yeah. Out. Like, you know, if you keep calling and calling and nobody ever picks up the phone yeah. somewhere, it's like, yeah. it's really maddening. Yeah. Um, so we do our best to talk to as many people as we can about the most important subjects and Basically, let the let the fans be a voice at the table when we're making decisions sure. about things that affect them. Yeah, um, like characters at the moment as well. Yeah, sure. for instance. So yeah. uh, it's a, it's a it's a change for Capcom as a company. Japanese companies have typically been very sort of we will have we will do this and then we will tell you about it. Yeah, that's yeah. the end of the relationship. Thank yeah. you. Please give us your money and mm. exit to the left. And it's funny because Ono is such a a wild exception to that rule, right? You it's it's yeah. new though. I mean, that's even for Ono. I don't think we've really seen the side of Ono before the Street Fighter Four era. Yeah, he, yeah. I mean, he because he has changed a lot. Like, before. I mean, just from watching interviews and stuff. Mm. We're talking about you behind your back, Ono. Sorry, <laughs> but like, um, when you saw Ono at Evo, he was he was really emotionally hit. He was like, "This is what happens when we make these games." Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's been uh, you know, that's been part of my my mission also is to get our producers out to as many live events as they can, sure. be talking on live streams and just because I know the power of the fans. It's really gratifying to see them excited about yeah. something that you're doing. And I think that kind of enthusiasm is infectious. So if you can show the producers that look, there are all these people who care a lot about your product. So it's important to you, but it's also really important to them. Um, I think that can develop a really good relationship and see more of the producers getting out there and involved with the fans and responsive to their concerns. What are your thoughts on people keeping the um, the community alive during those dark times? Like when when what what was tiding us over was anniversary edition. You know what I mean? I yeah. know exactly what you mean. Yeah. So there's a few answers to that question. One is. Personally, uh, I work every single day to make sure that that doesn't ever happen. And so even yeah. parts of me knows that maybe it will happen again, um, but every single day is the struggle to make sure that that doesn't happen sure. and to make the games we have the best they can be and we get the widest possible audience interested and hopefully some of those will stick and help build that community. Mm. Um, it's good business for Capcom, but it's it's great for the scene and that's, you know, as long as we're making great games, uh, Hopefully we can keep that at bay. Sure. Um, were that to happen, this was part of my explicit mission when I came to Capcom, was to try and build up a catalog of games that were so good um, that even if everybody wakes up tomorrow and says, you know, or the popular uh, crowd or the, the, the gaming main, mainstream says, you know what, fighting games suck, we're done with this, um, they're stupid, mm. and then, you know, we never get to make another fighting game. Um, or it takes us 10 years or whatever. Uh, I want to make games that are good enough to stand that test of time. Oh, wow. Um, sure. So, you know, I think we've made some good ones so far, and I hope we get to make some, some more good ones, maybe even better ones, mm. and keep improving. So, I hope it never happens. If it does, I think we have a storehouse of good games. And the thing was, I mean, when we really saw the scene sort of 
begin to take off. The fires were burning. Um, people talk about the 10 years before Street Fighter 4 as this dark age, but the mm. truth of it is, Evo and a bunch of other tournaments actually grew. Yeah, yeah, that's year. true. That is very, that's so, an incredibly good point. And yeah. That's, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's the thing. There were no games coming out, and the games that were there were getting older and older. They educated a new generation of players, so even sure. even on old games, new players were able. So that's that goes to a lot of it is bringing in new players and finding talented players from other people or people who have the right kind of mindset for fighting games. Drawing those people in is part of what keeps the scene healthy. But yeah, even when there were no games coming out, that was still growing. It yeah. wasn't growing at the same rate. It wasn't obviously it helps when there's great new games um, that can really push things forward. But it was going these directions already. Yeah. That's um, true. So good community management people who are doing smart things uh, and doing right by their players and making a fun place. I mean, yeah. whatever you can talk in abstract terms, but if it's fun and you have a good good feeling with uh, your friends and good competition, that can grow um, even if we stop making games tomorrow. But uh, God willing, we won't do that and we'll have more and better games. Cool. Yeah. On to the horizon. <laughs> I definitely had the thought that you know it was kind of phase out because all the signs were there, all the arcades were dying. Sure. Um, but fighting games just weren't being produced by the companies anymore. So um, I mean, everybody's kind of probably had that down in the back of their mind. But yeah, Street Fighter Four really changed everything. They went back to their roots, brought the community back together. So and now fighting games are back in a huge way, and I'm really really glad to see that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have thought of this just like a few years ago. Sure. So yeah, it was. <laughs> I mean, big change to the entire scene. Uh, well, I definitely remember from like playing early on, like when like, like when I was little, like I said. Yeah, sure, I remember sure. like I would have to like wait in line in the arcades for like an hour, sometimes two hours to get like one game. But but I wasn't really competitive back then, so I mean, but like coming coming to now, like when you play a game like CBS2, those strike, you don't have to wait like two, three people in line, so it was very different. So like there were, you you could tell it was dying down, but I actually had kind of like faith that. Capcom would bring a new game out because I mean even though the arcade scene was dying I mean there was always console and I felt like there was always some kind of like future for the console and yeah, I, yeah. I just I, I just wasn't totally sure but I didn't think it would ever die out and I, I, I wasn't know if it was going to be a Street Fighter 4 I was going to be like some new kind of fighting game that they created but yeah, I was thought something would too. yeah I was thinking something I always thought something was going to come out yeah at first I was actually it looked really nice but I was kind of turned off by it because I mean I know they tried to attempt to do it like a 3D-ish game before like, yeah. like Street Fighter EX is 2D but 3D and that kind of didn't do so well mm -hmm. and and they had they had that attack on fighting it fighting jam which was at first a 3d fighting game but they canned it yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah yeah so I was kind of like skeptical I was like well it might not do good but it might do good but then when I actually finally got to play it I was yeah. like I didn't like it at first but it just kind of grows on you like yeah, yeah it, be, it started becoming like a really fun game and then like it just made it seem like gigantic so I mean sure. yeah. yeah so the more people to play the better um, Seth was very instrumental in getting the play um, to feel like the old Street Fighter games the the early versions was pretty bad and it took a lot of polishing up but the finished version was a thousand times better um, and even the finished version I didn't really like it at first um, I didn't really like the feel of it but like Ricky said it kind of grows on you and I'm really glad he brought the community back and currently today it's still not one of my favorite Street Fighters but I mean what choice do you have like if I place it and then yeah I mean the fun fact is kind of high um, and they made it really easy and kind of even out the playing field, so it's, it's a different kind of street fighter. And what were you guys playing? Mean like you were playing Third Strike, right? I was playing Third Strike and Tekken Tag back then. Oh and nice! And I, I, I mainly knew him from from Third Strike because he would come to the arcade that I play at maybe like once a bit like every day. Like oh three wow! Months maybe, and I remember him because he used to be really good, and I could never beat him <laughs> back then. And I was known as the guy who I couldn't beat, so I always <laughs> beat him when I played him. 
when so, I can never beat him. But but when you were in the arcade, did you did you know of John? Like, like when John walked in, you're like, oh my god, it's like John Choi. No, no, I didn't know who he was. Oh wow! I just knew he was a really good. Player. This is a real good guy, but yeah. I don't know who he is. I wasn't like I wasn't into the scene really back then. I just I just played with like a bunch of my friends at the arcade, like after school or like even during school, like class and stuff to go play. I think he was, was like, like 13 years old. Yeah, was, like, <laughs> oh my god, kid. he was a little kid. How did you find out like he's one of the the the, the old the old the old order oh, of Street well, Fighter? You know, one of my friends actually knew who he was, and then actually after, after I heard his name, there was actually a magazine, a uh, video game magazine called Tips and Tricks, uh -huh. and um, they used to post um, tournament results and he used to have like a top ten players kind of thing. And, yeah. then, and John Choi was in there and he was number one. Oh, and you were so like, that, that's how I was like, oh, like oh, this guy's like the best player in the U.S. at the time. I was like, oh, I wonder why I'm gonna see this guy because he's like really good. Uh -huh. Yeah, so playing him back then like was like a little nerve wracking. <laughs> so little and so young playing. It's, it's like big dog, you know, and I was like, you know, I want to be good too, so I want to be this guy. But at the time, I had like had much experience, and that guy was, I was no chance against him. But how did you know about Street Fighter? Like, did you play it on Super Nintendo and then go, let's yeah, just check out this arcade? I, I played on like uh, on a Super Nintendo, but I mainly knew about it because my dad, because my dad used to go play with my cousin when I. Oh, was, for real! Was, that is yeah, awesome. Yeah. It's such a cool story. Yeah, so yeah. I yeah. knew about it from then, but then I was, at that time I was like too little to like even like comprehend the game, so he would never take me with him. But yeah, yeah. I got a little bit older, then he started taking me to arcade, and like he taught me how to play Street Fighter. So he like trained you, like yeah. by your father. Yeah, he, he taught me how to play when I was little. Did you guys ever actually play mini golf here ever? Uh, yes, <laughs> I've actually played mini golf here, mostly with my various girlfriends. <laughs> Um, so they'd come and meet you here because you say, "Hey, let's play, no. let's, let's play, um, let's play some mini golf." And really, you'd be in here like playing, and you just finish, and you go, "Ah, oh, no, no, I just really know this really good mini golf course." Yeah, I mean, I've probably been to golf at like thousands and thousands of times. <laughs> I played mini golf maybe, maybe like. 10, 20 times total. Oh, wow. Yeah, not a lot. Uh, I first came here during, I guess, World Warrior days. Wow. Yeah, and I remember it was actually lined up against the wall here. And then this was kind of like the fighting corner. That, and then Champion Edition, Hyper Fighting. And then it kind of spread to the middle area because they used to host a lot of tournaments and they wanted it near the counter. Yeah. And how many people would you get um, at a tournament during the World Warrior days? Um, they used to have weekly tournaments and in anywhere between like 30 and 40 people. Wow. This is like the machine where me and like I and played. It, it used to be like right here in this corner. So that was many years ago. That was the very first tournament that the cannons and a couple other people kind of organized. And then that kind of just eventually morphed into evolution today. Um, I got the name Filipino Champ is when I played the Chunksta in NCR. Oh, sure, okay. And I beat him. Yeah. And then my my name was just Ryan, and then and then Nizi and everybody named me Filipino champ because I was the only Filipino in the group, and everybody else was like Hispanic and black. Cool. So like, <laughs> and then I was the first guy to beat Chunksta, you know, after he got second in Evo. It was just like, oh my god! So you're the magic Filipino. minority in the group. You're yeah, like, yeah, that's why they call me Filipino champ. But oh. yeah. Is that when you knew, like, you had um, potential, or when they started calling you Filipino champ? Were you like, no, I wasn't really being serious with the fighting games too. Oh I, wow! Before I used to have like two jobs, I was just working, partying, <laughs> getting drunk, yeah. doing the crazy stuff. But yeah. and then Street Fighter was just really big. Has Street Fighter like reined you in from your partying, or has it made it worse? Like, do you go to more parties now? Now that you no, know, you're less now. Yeah. You know, like maybe I got older, so that's probably why. <laughs> sure. But yeah. before I used to party and drink a lot, and then it was really bad. It got to the point as I was always drunk and oh, man. I became a bum. Like I'm always like. Um, yeah, is, over the next is it like day. a rag to riches story? Like I was drunk and stuff, and then Street Fighter came along. The Street Fighter came yeah, along. <laughs> like saved like, my life. And then I started like, I started, like sure. playing more and yeah, then yeah. just like hang and doing the right stuff. I think so. Like mm. working, just playing. You know. Cool, cool. But they they got laid off, so I guess I'm mostly just playing Street Fighter for a Marvel. I don't really go to forums like about dolls of them. Sure. I really yeah. don't go there sure. because they're just a bunch of idiots. I go there once in a while to, to tell them what's up about AE. Yeah, hey, I uh, discovered something about dolls and just to help out a bit. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't really listen to them because all they do there is whine about matchups, mm. and then they just they just start you know they just keep on whining about the match instead of like doing something about it. Yeah. They just keep trying like, dude, this is hopeless. Uh, this is another impossible matchup. You uh. know, they just never try to actually try 
like they just end up counter picking, picking yeah. the character in like a seven three match. But I try my, my hardest to just keep playing my, my character, mm. even though the matchup is totally not in my favor, you know? Because I'm not really talented with, 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 I mean, with gaming in general, like Street Fighter in general, so mm. I can't play a lot of characters like that, you know? I have to just always play my character so I get the feel of the game. I feel like when I stop playing, like if I, when I play Marvel yeah. and I play Street Fighter, I lose the feel of the game and I lose all my reactions, so I just need to constantly be playing my character. Sure, and just sticking with what you know. Yeah. Your confidence, do you think it's a big big part of, um, you know, you not yes. being scared, that, that helps you win? Because, yeah, because if I'm confident, I don't hold back on my game. Yeah. Because I feel like if I give the person like so much, to, I mean, too much respect. It affects yeah. my gameplay overall. Like I get too scared, I sort of backdash more or jump back more mm. to the corner. So if I'm confident leading them into the match, that means I will stand on my ground and try to fight him out of it. Cool. So it really affects my overall game. That's why I have to be confident. Sure, sure. Yeah. And is that something you um, you learned that you needed for Street Fighter, or is that just your personality that you brought to the game? Um, you know, the people that actually know me, like like in a personal level I'm yeah. not really like that you know like I'm, I'm actually nice like yeah, yeah. I, have, I have to you seem have like that, a nice guy I have to, <laughs> yeah. I, I have, to have that image because it helps my game overall like you know like everybody has that um that, the wrestling face almost. yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah, then you yeah, have yeah. that tournament face or you have that tournament mentality like yo I'm gonna win this shit you know yeah it's yeah kinda yeah like, I, I kinda need that but in in a day to day life I don't have I'm not like that you know <laughs> it's hard you know like but but I like it when people hate on me, like because it just fuels my. Fuels the fire. It just fuels me, like to do better. Yeah. Because they could hate me all day, but you know, if I keep winning, they can't do shit. About yeah, yeah. It, you know? Yeah. So like when the people like that just normally bashes me over and over again online, you know, mm. they can only say like they could just only go to personal. But dude, they say, oh, this nigga sucks, really, you know. But it's okay because yeah. I keep winning. So as long as I keep on winning, they can't really say much. Yeah. Exactly. And I mean. I mean, it's not like um, any of these guys have played you online or, or have met you in real life. If you met me in real life, I'm pretty sure they will change their opinion about me. Sure, sure. Yeah, because I'm not really like that, you know. If they meet me on a personal level outside of a tournament, then I'm pretty sure they'll... Because there's like, I, I, um, there was like a, a big group of haters, mm. but what happened, I met them and... Right now we're actually friends, you know. <laughs> cool, yeah. cool, cool. Yeah, I'm trying to learn other characters. Cool. Is it, why, just for fun or for matchup purposes? No, no, just for fun. Cool, cool. I don't like the counters from tournament, I only like to play Dalton. Yeah. But Ricky plays a lot of characters and it gets boring, like I only play Dalton, so mm. I try to learn other characters. That's cool. So you can kind of know, know the character inside and out, right? Mm, true. Yeah. Cool, cool. You and Ricky play each other all the time. Like, yeah. I mean, are there times where you guys just completely surprise each other? Like, you go, oh my god, like... No. Does, like, it, does it happen play, much? We at maybe, like, maybe 10,000 games already. <laughs> just like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Sure, sure. But it's fun though when we play because it's always um, shit and giggles. Like, we always yeah. laugh. Like, when he catches me with some stupid shit, it is, yeah. like, fun, you know. It's really fun to play yes, with them. When you're playing with top le level talent, yeah, I mean, it's really fun. It's yeah. real fun. Because, I mean, like, the mind yeah. games is there. And it's yeah. really fun. Sure, 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 cool.